so I presented to you a part of the statistical analysis we do in BG to generate a p-value for each gene in each sample for the hypothesis for testing whether a gene is actively expressed or not. And now I'm going to show you how we integrate all of that in BG so that you can compare expression between conditions, experiments, species. Um, okay, so again, showing you uh, this pipeline. So I presented you the detect active signal of expression. And now I'm going to present to you how we integrate all this data uh, consistently into BG. So an important point that Mark uh, mentioned in the overview is that we have an expect, expect curation. So it's very important to have very precise and detailed uh, annotation if we want to be able to compare the data uh, between different species. Uh, and, and with what I will present, I hope it, it will be clear afterward. But so as a reminder, what we annotate is anat uh, anatomy, so anatomy information, anatomic identity and cell type. We uh, annotate uh, development information, so development type and life stage. We annotate sex and strain. And I just throw a bunch of numbers here so that you have an idea of what it represents uh, as amount of data. So for bulk RNA-seq, for, for the latest release of BG, we have uh, above 16,000 RNA-seq libraries manually annotated like that to anatomy, development, sex, strain, about 13,000 of chip, uh, like 1,500 uh, full-length uh, single-cell RNA-seq library. We are working now for the next release at integrating target-based single-cell RNA-seq libraries. Uh, and that represents... So here you can see that represents uh, considering in situ abbreviation. In situ abbreviation are really uh, very detailed, precise annotation in a very specific uh, subregion of the brain or whatever. So that generate a lot of conditions. We have a lot of information, but for a few number of genes, for a small number of genes with this precision. While for bulk and seq we will have less conditions, but for whole the genome. And when we look at that, so for instance, considering only bulk rna -seq and fma where we have access to expression information for almost all the genome, that represents almost 7,000 conditions in 700 organs. So integrating all this information, manually curated, uh, provide us with gene expression information in a very much a lot of conditions and anatomical entities. And in typical experiments that will be isolated, you will look at expression per experiment. And typically you would have access to expression information in maybe 50 organs, for instance, and not 700 as in BG. So now I'm going to show you how we use the ontology. So Mark presented to you what an ontology is. And I'm going to show you how we use this ontology to propagate and reconcile all this expression information across experiments and across anatomy and species and what's not. Okay, so here Mark presented to you uh, what were ontologies. And I'm going to give you an example uh, with a simple part of the ontology. So for the anatomy, you will have endocrine pancreas part of pancreas and exocrine pancreas part of pancreas, okay? We are going to use only these three terms for the anatomy. And for the development, you will have the sexually immature uh, stage, so juvenile stage for most species, which is part of the fully formed stage. So fully formed stage is post-larval, post-embryonic stage, where you are, yeah, your organism is complete. The development of your organism, all the parts of your organism are there. So it's post-larval, post-embryonic stage. Uh, and among these, you will have sexually immature or sexually mature, but I'm going to use only these two terms. Okay, so now let's imagine that we have information for three genes uh, in this condition, exocrine pancreas sexually immature, endocrine pancreas sexually immature, and pancreas fully formed. So here, what I represent here is a graph of condition considering only these three anatomic entities and these two developmental stage. 
So we would use all permutations of these conditions to generate what we call a graph of condition, an ontology of conditions. So you will have the exocrine pancreas at the sexually immature stage, which is part of the exocrine pancreas at the fully formed stage, which is part of the pancreas at the fully formed stage. So you can see here that we have all possible permutations with relation between them. In the first place, we have expression information only for these three conditions here, exocrine pancreas sexually immature for one of the gene, endocrine pancreas sexually immature for another gene, and pancreas fully formed for the third gene. You can see here that at this point, in no condition, we can make a comparison of expression because we don't have data for the three genes in the same condition. So if we were just to use the data like that, we would be stuck here and not be able to do any comparison of expression between these three genes. So what we do is that we are going to propagate the expression information in this graph. So that we know, for instance, that if this gene is expressed in this condition, it means that it is also expressed in this condition and in this condition and this condition. So this is what we do here. We propagate the information. OK, I hope that is clear. And what we end up with at the end is that we manage to get a comparable expression information in this pancreas fully formed condition because we have propagated the information from all the different conditions. At, at the end of this process, we end up with one condition with information for the three genes. So this is how we manage uh, yeah, to perform comparison in BG. So what I want to show you also is that in the same way that we showed you that our creation process is very precise, the ontology work to describe anatomy and development is also very precise and it accommodates different between species. Uh, I give you an example here of the different between differences between species in anatomy. So in the brain, you have a structure called island of Kareja, uh, which I like, yeah, and which is part of the olfactory tubercle in mouse, okay? So you have this structure here, which is part of the olfactory tubercle. So those are brain slices, uh, in mice. But if you look in primates, actually the island of Calera are not part of the olfactory tubercle, they are part of the nucleus accumbens here. So the structures are present in mouse and in primates, but they are not in the same area of the brain. They don't have the same part of relationship. So if we were to propagate information using the graph of condition here, the graph will look different if it was a propagation for mouse or a propagation for primate, okay? And so this is, yeah, summarizing that. Island of Calera, part of olfactory tubercle in mice, not of nucleus accumbens, but part of nucleus accumbens in human, for instance, and not part of olfactory tubercle. So you have differences like that in the graph representing anatomy in different species. And we have an ontology too. It just I throw that at you, you don't have to understand, it's just to show you how we capture that in an ontology. So uh, the ontology here is represent represented in OBO format. Here it is in Manchester syntax. And what it says, basically it says, when island of Calera is part of primates, then it is part nucleus accumbens. But when it is part of rodentia, then it is part of olfactory tubercle. So this is the ontology trick that we use to be able to represent anatomy in any animal species and have correct propagation of expression information depending on the species. So here uh, I have a little WooClap for you. Uh, so again, from the main page, you have the data integration. Yeah, uh, Frédéric, yeah. the link to the activities here, the sharing doesn't work for this Google Doc. I don't know why. You don't see my screen. This is what I you see, see your screen, but if you if we click on the the link activities, yeah, it's uh, not shared. You have to uh, to to do the sharing. Yeah, my bad. I thought that it was okay. Uh, well, it should be shared, but really. I don't know. Does it work for other people? For me, it says it's not allowed. Okay. 
try to replace the link here. Does it works now? That's right. No. Okay, so access can, denied. So okay, we need to provide access uh, as editors, maybe. Does it work now? Yeah, now it works. Okay. So here we are in this first question about the graph of conditions in BG. So uh, please follow this link. And if Mark, you can activate the vote. It's active. You have 56 seconds left. Okay, so please and vote. So multiple answers are allowed. So please yeah, click any answer that you think are correct. And then I will stop my screen sharing for Mark to display the results. We have one answer and 32 seconds left. <laughs> yeah, so please follow this link here. Yes, answers are coming in. Okay, so I stop my screen sharing for you, Mark, to display it. <clears throat> yeah, display it at the end. Yeah. Okay, so the graph of condition generated in BG. Uh, <coughs> sorry. So considers all permutation of an identity dev stage sex train. So yes, uh, it consider all of that. So as I showed you, uh, we had only three anatomical entities and two developmental stages, and we generated conditions for all permutation of this term in the example I showed you, and we will do that for all organs, all dev stage, all sex, all strain, leading to have like tens of thousands of conditions in BG representing conditions of expression. Uh, it varies between species. Yes, it does. So as I showed you, you would have different relationship between organs in different species. And we will take that into account to produce the graph of conditions. This graph will be different depending on the species. It uses anatomical ontology, yes. Uh, it uses developmental stage ontology, yes, as well. And yes, for everything. That was a trick question. Everything was true. So I didn't show it to you, but we also use a kind of a sex ontology and a strain ontology because uh, if we have data annotated in male or in female, at some point, maybe we would like to make the comparison without taking the sex into account. Like we would like to make the comparison for any sex really. And this is what you see on the gene page in BG when you see only anatomical entity, it is not taking into account the sex. So it means that we have propagated all the information from female and male to a common root. So in a way it is an ontology because female is a subtype of any sex. And for strain, it's the same. All the strains that we annotate in BG, they are all a subtype of wild type because in bg we only annotate lc wild type data so again if you want to compare your gene expression without taking into account the strain we need to propagate all this expression information to wild type so that it is applicable to any strain so here all the answers should have been clicked basically okay so if you can stop your sharing i go back to mine Yep. Okay, you see full screen, right? Okay. So I continue. Uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah. So we we propagate this expression information, meaning p-values. Okay, so for each sample, for each gene, we have generated p-values to estimate whether it was actively expressed. And then we propagate this p-value. So here it's called, it's, it's written present absent, but what is propagated really are p-values. So each p-value from each gene and sample is propagated along this graph of conditions. So that at the end of the day, we got p-values in this condition for all three genes, okay? 
But then we, we might have many samples and many conditions for a same gene. So we would end up with many p-values for a given gene in this condition, for instance. So what we do is that we do a FDR correction. We compute a FDR corrected p-value by the Benjamini Horberg procedure, so BH procedure for correcting for false discovery rates. And then, so at the end of the day, it means that for each gene in each condition, we will end up with one FDR corrected p-value. And this is what is displayed on the gene page in the FDR column. And also what we would keep as information is the FDR corrected p-value in sub-conditions. So for gene A, for instance, we will have one FDR corrected p-value in this condition, but we will also uh, keep in mind what is the best FDR corrected p-value among the sub-conditions. And it is important for the next slide. For the next slide, at the end of the day, in BG, you are going to show a simplified information of present or absent with three quality level, uh, gold, silver, or bronze. So present gold is when for a gene in a condition, the FDR corrected p-value is below 0.01. Uh, present silver is if the p-value is below 0.05 and present bronze it's like if in the condition itself the p-value was not significant but in a sub-condition the p-value was significant so if i go back to here imagine that for gene a in this condition the the p-value is not significant but maybe here in that substructure it was significant so when we took into account all the information, then the correction led to have a non-significant p-value here, but still it was expressed in this subcondition. So it's to have consistent information that we do that. Because for instance, let's say that you have expression of the of a gene in the heat brain, but then when we integrate all the data in brain, we conclude that it's not significant. That will not make any sense to say that the gene is expressed in the in brain, but not in the brain, right? So this is why we do that. We take also information into account from the subconditions. But here it is with a low quality level. It is present bronze. And in BG, by default, we only display the gold and silver level. So if you use our packages or download our data, you might see the bronze information. But on the BG website, you will see only the gold and silver, very highly reliable information. And then we have also absent expression calls information. And basically, I'm not going to go into too, too much details, but absent, it's when it's not present. And you have a FDR p-value provided by what we call trusted data types for absent calls, meaning RNA-seq, Affymetrix, full length, single cell RNA-seq, uh, because we don't trust uh, target-based uh, single cell or EST data to produce a reliable information to know that a gene was not active, okay? So then you have absent gold if the FDRP value was above 0.1, silver if it was above 0.05, and bronze is the FDRP value was non-significant and from any data type. So even target-based single cell rna -seq. But again, we won't display that in the BG interface. So again, I have a small question here for you. That's the second question about present expression calls. Uh, so please, if you can follow this link here and Mark, if you can activate uh, the WooClub. Um, Mark? Yeah, it's the a genus considered expressed in a condition. Yeah. Yeah. Starting the right one. Okay, it started. Okay. So I'm gonna stop my sharing so that Mark can show the results. Uh, 
A lot of last minute change in the votes. Okay, so a gene is considered expressed in a condition if for this gene, the FDR corrected p-value is below 0 0.05 in this condition, yes. The FDR corrected p-value is below 0 0.05 in any of the subconditions, yes. At worst, that would be a present bronze, but that might be a present silver or gold if the p-value is significant in the condition itself as well. The FDR corrected p-value is below 0 0.05 in this condition and above 0 0.05 in all subconditions. Yes, it is true as well. It was kind of a, a trick that it doesn't matter that it's not significant in subconditions if it is uh, significant after propagation. So it means here that maybe we didn't have enough statistical power in the different parts of the brain, for instance, but when we integrate all this data, when we propagate all this data at the brain level, then we have enough statistical power and we can say that the gene is expressed in the brain, okay? So again, all these sensors were supposed to be true, okay? So I get back to the presentation. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly uh, give you an idea of what we call expression ranks and expression scores. So the problem with our uh, approach of generating binary present absent expression calls is that it's qualitative only. You don't have any quantitative information about the expression level. So you miss this information to compare expression level between experiments and between genes. But how can we generate an integrated expression level from different data types, different experiments, different genes, different species? So we could not use parametric statistics for that. We use non-parametric statistics based on ranks. So meaning that in each sample, we rank the genes based on their expression levels, and then we integrate this rank. Sorry, oh, yeah. So then we, we, we propagate this rank information, we normalize them. So for each data type, we compute a weighted mean ranks based on the expression data. Then we normalize this rank between data types and conditions so that they are comparable. And then we also propagate these ranks using the graph of conditions in the same way that we propagate the p-values, okay? And then ranks are not intuitive because the lowest rank is the highest expression level. So users were often confused uh, because of that. So what we do is that we transform these ranks into what we call an expression score. Uh, an expression score is between zero and 100. And the higher the expression score, the higher the expression level of your gene, okay? So I have a last WooClap question here. Very quickly, if you can launch uh, quickly the vote, please, Mark. Uh, a last question about integration of expression information, just to see if all of that makes sense to you. If you can- uh, The vote is started. Yeah, if you can go on the vote page and vote, then just wrap up the presentation. Should have put an option. We decide by a WooClap vote of users. <laughs> So well, for now, the variance on the replies is pretty low. <laughs> ah, more variance is appearing. Okay. Okay, so our expression information is integrated in BG. P-values are propagating along the graph of conditions. Yes, so this was all part of this presentation. So I had hope more yes to this. Uh, present absent expression calls are propagating along the graph of conditions. No, we generate the present absent expression calls from the P-values from the FDR corrected P-value that were propagated. So we don't propagate the calls directly. We propagate the p-values and then we make the calls. Only expression information in the condition itself is considered. No, 
uh, we consider also the p-values coming from all substructures, all subconditions, because we propagate them, and then we look at them in each condition. Expression ranks and expression score are propagating along the, along the graph of condition. Yes. So it was kind of a question summarizing a bit everything. And obviously, the latest things presented, this is what you had in mind. But everything was true except this one. Uh, no, this one was not true, and this one was not true. So first and last answer were true. OK? So I'm going to wrap up in 30 seconds. Uh, the end of this presentation. Yep. Okay, so I uh, wanted to show you a, a, an example. So it's the gene page, the result gene page for apoquin, which is an adipoprotein, a, a digestive protein produced by liver. And if you look at human, you can see that thanks to the expression score, we managed to show the top, the highest expression in liver. Okay. And just to mention also that we report absence of expression. So this is where this gene is non-significantly expressed. You can see a lot of epithelium terms here, ligament, epithelium. So obviously, this digestive protein should not be expressed in epithelium, apparently, considering this data. What I want to show you is that we have a very consistent information across all species. So mouse, liver, zebrafish, liver, primates, liver. You know, for all these species, the top term that come up for this apoquan gene in all these species is always liver. And if I do an expression comparison using the tool that Mark just highlighted before, so I enter the list of all orthologs in Teria, and the result I have is that all my genes are conserved, have a conserved expression in liver, hepatobiliary system, endocrine, digestive system. So again, this is how we can compare then this information uh, across species and experiments. So just to summarize, to know the conditions where genes are expressed, BG performs manual and precise annotation to anatomy developed sex and strains. And then we integrate all of that by generating p-value for each gene and each sample, computing expression ranks and score for each gene in each condition. And then we propagate all this information along the graph of condition and generate a FDR corrected p-value.